Are we good? Hello? Test, test. I think we are. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I am your host, Nelson. This is episode 127. Yes. So what are we building today? Okay. So I'm really excited about this one. And I think a lot of people are excited about this one as well because well, let me fix this real quick. Okay, cool. So why are a lot of people excited? Well, Webflow updated its homepage. Now, let's let's just all journey through the new homepage together real quick, real quick. All right. So let's let's get the uh, loading animations. Refresh. Bam, bam. So smooth. So smooth. All right. Now let's take this journey together, okay? This is unlike um any any site i've seen and i know it might sound a little biased but it's kind of true because usually you see websites that are like hero row and then three columns and then a zigzag formation of of content and whatnot and then the call to action at the very bottom but this one it's it's a it's not a full screen background video but it's like just enough to pique your interest and as we scroll down the fun begins with all this parallax scrolling stuff. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The, it's just intense. And it just brings you through the story of design, build, and launch. The three things that you can do inside of Webflow. And then you keep going down and you can see what type of sites you can build. Coming soon, e-commerce stores. Yes. Uh, and you just keep scrolling and scrolling. And it tells the story of Webflow so beautifully. And it's not even done even at that section because we're showing you what you can do um, depending on your persona. Are you a freelancer, agency, marketing team, business owner, or are you just here to prototype? Webflow can help you do it. And this just page just keeps going and going. And finally, the call to action right here, and it changes the background color. It's just so nice. Now, if you haven't visited webflow.com yet please do yourself a favor and go to it and just experience the storytelling that the marketing team uh has done uh is is just so amazing um now what are we doing today we're going to break down in small little chunks these animations these interactions that are happening here when you put it all together it's it's a great experience. What we're going to do is try to reverse engineer as much as we can some of the, the little interactions. A lot of the interactions that you see here are basic. Yeah, they're basic. And you can read on how or watch how to do it at university.webflow.com. We have a bunch of, of videos and articles to show you how to do some of these basic scrolling um, interactions. Okay. So for this stream, I want to focus on two things. And if we have extra time, we'll go ahead and do some other little things. But two things I want to focus on is this. So watch the design, build, and launch, okay? Watch what happens. It sticks, okay? Now, if you haven't heard of what they call CSS sticky, it's a new position property uh, that – it's a new CSS position property that, like, when it gets to a certain area of the page, it sticks, it, be, it changes its uh, position from, I think, static or relative to fixed. And then once it gets to another section, it removes the fixed and changes it to relative. Okay? And that's the same thing that's happening with this area right here. Okay? So we're going to show you how to do that inside of Webflow. And um, also, I'm going to show you how to do this how to scroll but it's going in a diagonal motion okay so yeah these uh i practiced it uh last night and over the weekend and i kind of get it so let's let's learn some stuff oh my gosh oh wait first big shout out big props to our design lead ryan morrison i mean here here's his dribble page if you want to follow him on dribble it's Rai Rai JMO, right? So he's our brand design lead. I mean, he he has been doing some great stuff for us all the way back into like 
it's, oof, he's been doing a lot of stuff and it's it's a unique style you know so big shout out to ryan and also just joining the team a couple months ago to help build this uh new homepage, jp so check him out it's uh j-o-a-o-p-a-u-l-o-t-s check his uh dribble uh dribble account out and he's been doing a lot of stuff with webflow on his own before he was actually hired onto webflow so yeah follow him follow these two guys great inspiration in their whole uh dribble account yeah yeah good stuff so big shout out to you two thank you so much for doing this kind of stuff all right let's begin here's my practice that i did over the weekend so I just made some like bare bones kind of thing. So this blue box is sticky, okay? And then it unsticks right here, okay? And then this is sticky too, but it's also moving in that diagonal direction, okay? So those are the two things we're gonna quickly go over, okay? And you can see even in the non-preview mode, the blue box sticks as I scroll and this one sticks as well. Okay, so let me try to recreate this. And as always, at the end of every stream, what I do is I showcase it on my Webflow account so you can clone it. And I'll put the link in the YouTube description, in the Webflow forums at forum.webflow.com. And I'll also tweet it out so you can clone, it, clone the project into your own Webflow account for free and then reverse engineer what I've done, build on top of it, or even use it for a future client's project or your own personal site. You know, do whatever you want as long as you're learning and building. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and make a new page. I'm just gonna call this, um, just gonna call it workshop, okay? Blank page. And the first thing I wanna do is, if you see here, on my practice, I have this div, right? And it's a height of 50 VH. I just wanna give some space as if this was the hero row, okay? Like this hero row right here. And so that way I can see when it sticks and when it unsticks, okay? So let's go ahead and do that same thing. I'm gonna give a div block and we're gonna call this hero, okay? We're gonna pretend we have a hero row here and I'm gonna set it to something like 500 pixels. Okay, cool. And let me just put some text in the middle using Flexbox. Okay, hero row. And let's color this a bit so we know which row we're in. And I'm just choosing any color. Nah, something like that. So we have a hero row. Good, good. Make this white. Cool, hero row. Now, this is how we do sticky, okay? Let me show you on my example real quick. The sticky, a sticky has three elements, okay? So we have the scroll container. The scroll container is what determines how far we have to scroll, okay? Bef uh, when the uh, sticky starts and when the sticky ends, okay? And then we have the sticky container. And this is this is the thing where the, the custom code of CSS sticky uh, gets applied to. And then fixed, this is our blue box. This is whatever we want to stick as fixed uh, inside of the sticky container. Cool? All right, let's go. So I'm gonna go back to the workshop. Let's start a new section. And we're gonna call this section uh, scroll, okay? I'm not gonna use the same class names. So scroll, so how far do you wanna scroll so we know it's scrolling or, or not. So I usually put like, let's put 500 VH. So VH is viewport height. So I'm taking whatever this canvas height is times five, okay? So if you watch my scroll wheel or scroll bar right here, this is how far I'm scrolling now, okay? This gives me enough time to, this gives me enough space vertically to do any animations when the thing sticks, okay? Uh, just an example, if you look here, the design, build, and launch, the the height of it is probably really large because see how much time it takes to scroll up and down for all three sections? Yeah, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Next, let's go ahead and put, let's put a container real quick. 
Okay, and I don't new, normally use columns, but let's get put a columns right here. We're going to do it like this. I'm going to put some rich text. So I'm pretending that there is a uh, content, okay? And in here, we're going to put, actually, whoops, let's do this, not columns. Let me just put a rich text block. There we go. Let me just put a rich text block and then make this like a max width of 550. There we go. And then I'm going to have a have my box right here. So I'm going to drag a div block right here. And we're going to call this box. Okay. So I have my three things. So my scroll and then my container and then this rich text block is going to scroll okay there's going to be text and everything let's just keep putting more so you can see okay so it's going to keep scrolling that text but this box is not okay so we have our scroll and then our container so this container is already positioned nope i'm going to set that to Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thinking, thinking. I need my example real quick. The scroll container is, yeah, auto. And then the sticking container is position, there we go, position relative. That's what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and do that. On the container, we're going to call this sticky contain. Nope. I'll just call it container. Okay. And I'm going to set this to uh i'm gonna set uh set this to position relative and let's see here hold on real quick uh hey peter uh if you can can you help moderate please thank you so much all right Stu, if you can also yeah, thank you so much, Stu. All right, back on it. So we have this container right here, or we have this container right here, and it's position relative. And the reason why it's relative is because this right here, this box, is going to be position absolute. So this is what's going to stick to this container. All right, let's move this to the top right. Give it some dimensions. Let's give it a color of like purple-ish. Yeah, right there. All right. And this scroll right here, it's too close to that top. So let's push it down by like 50. All right. So now for the sticky part. Okay. So here's the trick. All right. And after I learned this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's custom code. That got me. So right here, we have the scroll container, the height, nothing else. We have the sticky container that's position relative, and then we have to set the top to zero. So let me do that right now. And the reason why we set the top to zero is because, actually we're gonna set the top to 50, and then set this one right there. The reason why is because when I hit here, once it hits here, that's when I want things to become sticky. So let's go back to my home page so I can copy the code, which is right here, the HTML embed. So you would just embed this right here. This is the magic right here. So you have a CSS style tag called sticky for the position, and that's it. So I'm going to copy that. Go to the workshop. Okay. And let's go ahead and drag in an embed. And this embed, you can put it anywhere. I'm going to put it right here at the top. Okay, style, save and close. And so since it's just code, it just collapses. All right. <laughs> I've never heard the word sticky so, said so many times. Well, this is a sticky situation. <laughs> okay, let's go. All right, so now that that's set, we can give a combo class to the container with a class name of sticky, okay? And so, well, let's, okay, that 50, let's see here. 
So if I drag it, there you go. But I don't like how it's, maybe this box right here. I'm gonna push it down by 50. There we go, that looks better. All right, so that was the magic. So the container has the combo class of sticky and that's all it is. Oh, everything else is sticking on it. This is not supposed to stick right here. What? Kind of work. <laughs> all right. Live stream fails. You know, it happens. It happens. All right, so this box is set to fit is absolute. And it's supposed to not move. Hmm. I will need to figure that out. <laughs> oh, darn. Okay. But as you see, things are sticking, but not the text. Why? I think it's because of the container. Let's see here. What if I remove the sticky off of the container? Does it... Okay, cool. Now what if I set the sticky to this box? Mm-hmm. That's what I figured. And the containers... Yeah, right there. Supposed to do that. But this guy is not supposed to be there. Yep. And that's why. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't the class go on the element and not the container? Yes. Box class, not sticky, eh? Yeah. So there's something. Okay, so maybe what if I put the box right here? And then, see what I'm wondering is how come, if I do fix, that's fixed to the body. How come this is not showing up? Yeah, why isn't the positioning working there? Yep. Okay, we'll move on when I figure it out after the stream or we can figure it out towards the end, but I want to show you the next part, okay? But that's all it is, this, this code right here, position, sticky, and then you set the position using, using this right here, where the top is, and the top is 50, and so... You can do that. And that works for like nav bars and everything. Like you've seen nav bars that do this when the nav bar starts at the bottom and then you start scrolling and then it sticks. So this is how you do it. Six set position sticky to box class and custom code. This is, uh, setting it to box class and custom code is the same thing because right now it's already relative to the parent. That's the parent scroll. But I'm setting the box to position relative, but yet we have it all the way to the left. So that's what I'm wondering. Why is it not going to the... Oh. Yeah. So I'm wondering how come it's not going to the right because the zero is on the right. Okay. All right. And again, if you have any questions, go to the Crowdcast chat room. And there's a question. Uh, there's a link that says "Ask a question." Ask it there, and then I will get to it, to it towards the end of the stream. All right. So we have ten more minutes for the demo. So let me show you the next part. The next part I want to show you is this guy right here. So I'm gonna make again the bare bones of this. Okay. So wh what it is is I'm just gonna make a bunch of boxes that go from this corner to this corner. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make another sticky. Let's just put this here for now. And 
let's get another scroll here. Put another section. Scroll. Let's make the scroll 400. Make it smaller. 400, 300. 200? Auto. Because I have all that text. Yeah, we'll set it to auto and make sure that it's 150 or 125. Okay, cool. All right. Now, let's go ahead and change this one. We'll call this scroll 2 because we want the background BG2. Because I want the background to have a different color so I know where I'm at. Okay, so I know where the separation is at. Okay. And then we got some padding up in there. Cool. Now for here, what we can do is, again, we're going to put a div. And this is going to be my container. And this is what's going to have sticky on it. And in this container, let me go back to my home. In this container, you'll see that I have site scroll. Let me go to it. Okay, so site scroll is just, this is what holds, this is what's gonna create the 3D effect for these fixed boxes, okay? So let me go to it. Um, yeah, Peter, if you can link the chat room for the Crowdcast. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and this one has the sticky to it, and this one right here is going to have a site wrapper. And this is going to be, let's make it full width and full height. Okay, so it takes up the whole width and height of the viewport. And this is going to be uh, relative because we're going to fix it to this, all the sites to this. And this is what we're going to, the children of this element is going to be 3D. So we're going to set something like crazy, like 2000, okay, for the children perspective. And now let's go ahead and make our boxes. Going to make some boxes real quick with Flexbox. So let's call it Flex Sites. And I know these are like bad class names, but this is just for demo purposes. Okay, so Flexbox, let's put some boxes up in here get a, get a div block and let's make it a let's make it a site okay and the site is just like this so let's put like f uh, five per row one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and each site is going to be 20 percent on the basis so now we have two rows of five uh let's see can i push them away from each other i'll have to Let's delete these. Go back to 20. There we go. And we're going to have a padding on all of them, like five. So we can have some gutters. And inside of each site, I'm going to put another div. And this is just going to be like site color. Like imagine if this site color was the thumbnail of a site. Okay. So let's go ahead and make it orange. Yeah, so orangey yellow, like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy this and paste it into each one. So pretend these are all the thumbnails. Cool. And each site, let's go ahead and make sure that this flexes too, because we want the, actually no, the site color should be height 100%. So what this does is whatever the parent element, which is site, is, whatever the height is, just reach 100% of it. So I'm going to go back to site and set this height to what looks like a thumbnail. 150? Yeah, like that. Okay, so now we have our site thumbnails. All right, now let's make it 3D. So to make it 3D, I can go to flex sites, go to styles make it transform we're gonna rotate it here's the fun part 
Whoop. Whoop. Again, you got to make sound effects or it's not as fun. <laughs> All right. So sound effects is a must. So there you go. Okay. Easy. Uh, why? Why no sticking? Why no sticky? I think it's because sticky needs to be set on site wrapper instead. Something happened. Oh, I don't have this. Site wrapper, set it to zero. Oh, good job. <laughs> Ain't it fun? Live demos. Let's double check my work, shall we? So that sticks. Site scroll doesn't have the stick. The sticky container does. Ah, okay. I get it. Let me go back. I got this, guys. I got this. This. The container will have sticky. And the one I'm missing is the height. What I'm missing is this height right here. So I'm going to set the height to on the container. Let's set it to 100 VH. Interesting. Yeah. Sticky sidebar. Noah saying, um, you don't have to worry about position relative and all that. This is an example I made using sticky code. All right. I'll check that out too. Thank you so much. Oh, and I practice this too. Sorry, everyone. All right. So the scroll is auto, but yet this guy right here. Why is this so large? I think it's because this container right here. Let's delete some of the read rich text blocks. There we go. Okay. Container sticky. I'm trying here. Not sure why it's not sticking. <laughs> Chris Canna, thank you so much. Yeah, this is tough. I was so excited and so confident in this. Anyways, well, last part, let me show you how this animates. And so what I learned yesterday was that you set it on the the container okay so what I did was right here this site scroll this is what I'm affecting so I have this I have this interaction and while scrolling into view I just take the site scroll and I move it from 100% percent uh, on the X and 100% on the Y and then I just move it to negative 60, negative 60%. And so it looks like this. And that's all it is. It's just moving the position on the X and Y. All right, so let me show you that real quick. I'm gonna go to my scroll right here. And this scroll is going to be, I'm gonna make this scroll right here 500 for now. Oh, it sticks. It's because of this. Got it. <laughs> See, I told you I can do it. <laughs> All right. So we have this scroll right here. We affect this element trigger. And what it is, is while scrolling in view, play animation. I'm going to create a new one and call it site scroll. Now I'm going to go to my navigator and go to site wrapper. And this site wrapper is going to move. So on the initial state at 0%, I'm going to set the x to 100 and this one to 100, so x and y 100, and this one right here is negative 60% to negative 60%. Oh, nope, negative 60%. There we go. Let's try it again. 
Yes! And there we go. And because it's not going all the way to 100% is because I can't scroll that far. So let me just take this guy right here. And just put some crazy bottom margin like 50 VH. So that way I can scroll past it. Okay. So let's review. And there we go. Easy, right? <laughs> Yeah, so it takes some practice. It takes some practice. And um, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't go over, okay? And because of timing. And I w just wanted to show you, as with all workshops, I want to show you the bare bones of what you can do with uh, a site like, with an uh, inspiration or an example like this, okay? But there's like, so many things to appreciate about this design the 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 concept the storytelling and the use of colors the layout there's so many things that of course i'm not going to go over because that would be like a hours hours long stream okay but we don't have time for that but hopefully this demo showed you some stuff i mean again go to university.webflow.com to see how how a scroll of how a scroll can affect different elements all at the same time okay and i just showed you showed you a very simple version of that which is this scroll while scrolling in view is affecting a different element completely different element okay um so yeah let's go to the questions i see there's four questions in the crowdcast chat room if you're not on the crowdcast link um let's see here yeah peter and Stu, the moderators of the youtube chat room they're linking it there so ask your question there also if you have a webflow site if you have a website site that you want me to look over right now and feature on the stream link it in the live chat room right now and let's talk about it and i want to give a big shout out to noah uh who is sharing his work let's see here webflow.com slash website slash sticky dash sidebar dash with dash flex let's see here cool me oh yeah graphic owls what's up so yeah you can clone this for free so I should have done this, <laughs> but yeah, th this looks like the basic bare bones of what I should have been doing, but thank you so much, uh, Noah, for letting people clone this. Uh, look at that. 138 people already made, uh, made a clone of it. Go ahead and click the like button for him. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, let's go to, let's go to the sites. All right. So what are you guys working on? I see. Would love some feedback from Isaac. Let me check out his site real quick. And again, it has to be a Webflow site or else I won't be featuring it. So let's throw it over here. Cool. All right, Isaac. Let's see. Okay, my first thought is, wow, I like the type. It's pretty cool how you went upside down here. It's a nice effect. It's a nice uh, a texture. This nice minimalism. This is cool. Okay. Uh, plus sign immediately to me. It sound plus sign means more or adding. Uh, so if I click on it, I'm already thinking it's a menu, which it is. Ah, that that menu right here. You can learn that from university.webflow.com. I know um, our education team, McGuire and Stacy, have created a video on how to do this uh, this exact menu. Good job. Okay, scrolling down. Nice, nice. Like your colors. Good job. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering why do you do the grayscale? Okay, I know you want to do a hover effect, but when it goes grayscale, what is that to me as a user? What is that telling me? So usually grayscale um, in UI is like disabled or not working or it's just something unimportant. 
you know but if you want someone to click on something uh maybe it should be backwards maybe it should start as grayscale and then turn color because it is important or you know you can make a grayscale and put a color on top of it like a, a solid color on top and then have some sort of uh, text on top that says a little bit about what i'm about to go to okay um so yeah if i click on this okay oh, okay that's cute i like that little movement all right see this that's what i'm talking about it starts as black and then it has color this type right here and then something's moving so maybe something like that okay but great job i love i love this i love your your style it works all right um and i don't speak this language so i don't know what i'm looking at but i see the word portfolio and i don't like to translate because i want to see what it's what it is that you're trying to design that's cool no translate i want to see it exactly cool good job yeah i have besides that i have nothing else to say i mean really good uh well okay now you need a footer here i mean i feel like when we get to the bottom what am i supposed to do from here you know but other than that good job good job all right uh let's see here next one um uh wow there's a lot of links here we go i'm very new to webflow no can't. let's go to susan i'm only since you're posting what three links uh give me your best link susan give me your best link i only want one all right uh while i'm waiting for that we'll go to nicholas and then after do after we do these reviews i will go ahead and take your questions so let's go and send this over boom go nice nice all right so again i'm not going to translate okay uh Oh, I was confused <laughs> because this uh, scroll bar right here is the same color as this background color. So I thought you had a horizontal scroll bar. So that was my first thought. But okay, that's just me being a designer. Um, okay, so let's talk about nav bars. Uh, we're going to talk about nav bars and sliders. Okay, so the first thing, nav bars. If you're going to have uh, a drop down, don't scare the user. Okay, so when I first opened this drop down, I was like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff happening here. So since my first reaction for this one was, okay, this has a drop down, there's a lot of information. The next one is going to have a drop down, right? No. Okay, well, the next one, no. So all of these don't have a drop down, but yet this does. So that kind of surprises the user. How to fix that? is a simple down arrow okay so i would suggest putting a down arrow and if you notice if you go to webflow let me just add a drop down right here real quick if you notice when we add a drop down component we have a down arrow right here we already add that for you why is because for the user experience okay we want to tell the user without using words that hey when you hover over this, there's going to be some stuff, all right? Now, you may think, okay, why don't you do that on Webflow? It's because most of them, and maybe we should do, oh, yeah, maybe we should do that with these, and maybe, or maybe the blog should have a an icon that shows that you're linking over to another page, because if you go like that, it's a completely different site. But, yeah, if you start a pattern then people will be like, okay, so this has a drop down. So that means the rest should have a drop down. But this one doesn't. So yeah, maybe I can tell that to the team. But here, just have a down arrow. Okay, I'm done. Now, sliders. Um, most people won't stay beyond the second or even the third slide. Okay, so be careful when you're using sliders on the homepage. I know you're trying to use, show fashion and everything. It seems like it for fashion for hats but i think it's more appreciated when someone is showing you the hats 
um, without you without it scrolling on its own. Again, you want to give the user the control. Right now, you're taking control away from the user and making that autoplay, saying, here's this hat, here's this hat, here's this hat, rather than the user like, you're giving the user the first hat, and then the user's like, oh, okay, let me study it. Do I like it? No, I want to see the next one. I'm going to give it back. Okay, let me see the second one. Okay, cool. But we're here. It's like, I'm not giving you time to study the hat. Give it back. I'm going to give you the next one. Give it back. So like that. So here, this one makes sense. I get to study each one. Which one do I want to see? Okay, I think I like this one. So I'm going to click on, click on over to it, and there you go. But this is a shop? And it has filters? Whoa. Great job. This is huge. Oh, let's 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 look at one. Uh let's go to a basic one. Let's see here. Like that. Wow. I'm impressed. Great job. How long did this take? All right. Well, great job. Um, uh, who was this? Half Nicholas. Great job. Th this must have taken a while. Because this is all... Yeah, this is all um, Webflow Collections, right? Man. Great job. So besides that on the homepage, uh, let's just take a look at the whole homepage. Okay. Cool. Oh, watch out for your flex box right here. Nice. So, uh, well, yeah. I was going to say if you're using this grayscale to color, are you using it anywhere else? But I guess it's okay since this is a different context. Cool social media. Well, great job. Great job. All right. Let's go. Last link from Susan, and then I'll give 15 minutes for questions. There's nine questions. Woo. All right. Susan, what are you working on? Okay. Newberry Port Documentary Film Festival. Let's throw that over. All right. All right. Main. There we go. All right. Uh, ooh, you're doing the. Oh, I forgot the name. Uh, Ken Burns. There it goes. Ken Burns effect. That's nice. So is this looping? So will it uh scale slowly and then finally after like, how many seconds are you doing? Are you doing a whole minute? After that scale, does it go back down? That's what I'm wondering. But I like it. Ken Burns effect. If you press play, light box, that's what I thought. Good job. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, usually people put like, learn more, read more, scroll down. But you didn't. That's fine because people still scroll. So, okay. White space is nice. Cool. Um, why push down on the Y axis? I'm wondering. Just honest thought. I mean, if this is part of your style, that's totally fine. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, scrolling down. Very. Oh, okay, you're using that thing that we do on our blog. That's cool, which is really simple because it's just a fixed background. Good job. Oh, and then you're using the um, what is it when you make everything look like a toy or like? Mr. Rogers neighborhood or something. I forgot what was this called that effect. But that's cool. Nice. I, I love the the spacing. Gives me time gives my eyes time to breathe. Nice. Yeah, I got I got nothing. That's cool. So I saw the bottom of this person just for a half second. But I, I guess it's okay. Um, I'm not sure if you meant for this to cut right here. But yeah, doing angles it is tough. So I totally understand. I've had trouble too. Website created with love. Nice. Okay, let's go to one more page real quick just to understand the child page. Okay, cool. Uh, watch out. So 
it looks weird when the nav bar comes up like that and then you see a little piece of your hero row coming up like that. But I mean, these are just small things. Overall, your iconography, I, I, good choice. I don't know if you downloaded those or you made those, but good, good choice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, good job, Susan. Tilt shift. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you to uh, the three people who submitted their uh, sites for review. Thank you for putting yourselves out there. Let's talk. Uh, let's answer some questions. We got 10 of them. Uh, let's start from the top. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay. Another review. Are you reviewing sites today? Can you check this out? Sure. Why not? Still concept. First page. All right, so uh, let me, okay, let me throw this over. All right, there we go. Refresh. So you have a preloader. Nice. More dots, more dots. Okay, so we have a uh, mouse. We got a mouse movement here. Watch out for your scroll bar. You have a horizontal scroll. It's happening because of these two dots right here. Uh, okay, but at the for the page itself, that's pretty cool. Uh, Want to know what the dots... Oh, yeah, the dots are part of the logo. I like it. All right. Your menu, full screen? Yeah, I knew it. Good job. I like this. This is nice. Good job. Explore. I'm not going to click. Just going to scroll down and see the storytelling. Nice. Okay, so watch out for the dots that uh, go behind the text because it's kind of distracting. So what if you can put like more depth to it? You know, some dots are closer to you, right? So you have some dots that are closer to you and they're like out of focus. So you can add a blur filter to it. And then some dots are further away. So they're smaller. They have a little bit of blur and their op opacity is like slightly down so maybe try that you since you have a lot of moving elements imagine if you're looking through a microscope or something and you see some that are close to you and see some that are far to you so play with that you have three levels you have the foreground um uh, you got like something that's close to you and then the middle which is clear and then stuff that are far from you okay scrolling on down cool Cool. Uh, I think this is too washed out. Uh, since you have boxes, why don't you put a box behind this so I can read the text better? And so that way you don't have to make this uh, kind of washed out where the contrast or, you know, you put some sort of white box on top of it and set the opacity. That's cool. I like this. That's cute. I like that. Great job. All right. All right. Good job. Go cool. All right, uh, Peter. Uh, question from Rafal. I was question from Rafal. I, w I wonder if scrolling like on DJI site section six split the drone picture is possible to make in Webflow. I kind of know what you're talking about, but let me just double check. Hold on, split the drone. What? Oh wait, this is different. It splits in half. Oh. Uh, let's see here. Let me throw it over. Okay, so section six. So this is one, two, three, four. I think it's this one. So it's telling me information about this. So it's two different products, but one goes to the side so you can learn about it. And then one moves to the other side. Okay. I get it. Uh, super simple. If I were to break down, break it down in my head, think about this. Think about this. You have two columns, right? One column, one column, we're doing the sticky thing. Okay. One column keeps moving up, but this one has the sticky. And as I scroll down, it's just like our homepage. Okay. As I scroll down, things move okay and i showed you how to do that with these right here 
okay so as I scroll down things move and all it is is I'm moving I'm moving this element to the left and then when I'm done scrolling it becomes unsticky and then I go here and it's just the opposite so can you do this in Webflow yes yes you can all right uh, let's move on good Peter oh, good Peter <laughs> good question Rafal and uh, let's see here from Curry uh, would love to see how they highlight the sticky menu items on scroll ah it's the same thing how to highlight sticky menu items I'm guessing let me go back on here let me see here highlight sticky menu items um, looking for it I'm not is it this so all it is is when you get to you when you get to a certain point okay so it's just, it's just like here, let me do it on this example okay so when you get to a certain point okay let's do it on these okay on the site wrapper so as I scroll down so when I get to let's say 35 right I'm gonna set the opacity to 100 but we're gonna start at opacity 20 okay and so I can see how it starts like that and then it gets lighter and so I can like bring this down to like 32 so watch what happens at 32 32 and then 33 see that's all it is and so I'm just affecting a different element based on the scroll percentage while I'm inside of that while I'm scrolling inside of that element. Hopefully this makes sense. Curry, great question. Uh, let's see here. I think this question's already been answered by Peter, so I'm gonna skip it, uh, Diego. Uh, question from YouTube stream. Uh, Michael, what software do you use for recording your stream? Ah, this, or, or your screen. Uh, we're broadcasting through XSplit, XSplit.com. This is what a lot of um, gamer tournaments use, and um, and I think uh, Twitch streamers. So yeah, this one's really good. Uh, next one, let's see here. Let's, uh, let me scroll, scroll. Chris Cannon, CSS Grid Q4. I cannot give any dates, but I am working with the product manager to uh i'm trying to find some time with uh with the team to get them to preview css grid on a future live stream when soon i know we always say soon but we want to make sure that it works right out of the gate and it doesn't have bugs you know so when we show the demo uh i will announce it on twitter uh our official uh, Twitter account will announce it. We'll put it on the form. We'll tell everyone about this stream so you will know, okay? Uh, okay, so we have some more site reviews. Uh, let's see here. We'll, s we'll actually design. Uh, I designed and built a site for real, real estate agency. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, Isaac. Oh, I already answered yours. Okay. Five more minutes. So a couple more questions and I think we're done. Well, I've, let's see here. Okay, so Peter, you have a site too that you're working on. Kitty Lash Online, what is, and it's a shop. Let's see here, let's throw it over. There we go, Kitty Lash. What is this about, sir? All right, uh, interesting, interesting nav. Like, I don't have any problems with this hover effect. I'm just like, 
trying to take it in. It's pretty cool. Does Kitty Lash not have a logo? Or at least a logo type? Because when I'm thinking Kitty Lash and I see the perfect lash, I'm guessing it's makeup. So in my head, if it has to do with eyelashes, eyelashes always grow in a curve. So if you're looking for some sort of a logo type, maybe something that's curvy that, but also looks like a paintbrush or something. I don't know. So that's my first thought on, on this because it doesn't really stand out when it's just a, f a basic font. But yeah, that's a, that's a branding thing. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Shop our lashes. Let me go through this first. Oh, okay. I like those. Those are masking effect. Okay, dots. Um, what if you can do, since you have this type doing this stuff, what if you can do parallax where these are moving up as I scroll down, you know, in different speeds? That'd be cool. Oh, you're already doing it with the image. Why not do it with the type and the dots? Just a thought. Wait, I think you are. Yeah, you are. Well, it was very subtle. Okay. Moving on. Okay, cool hovers. Nice, nice. Nice. Interesting how you only use the brown at the top. Can you use the brown for the call to actions or maybe these solid backgrounds? The new maybe as well? I don't know. I, again, this is just a branding thing, so maybe this is how your client wants it. But the only thing is their logo to me. That's that could be worked on. But good job. Let's let's look at one of the products. Let's let's see here. Is this Foxy Cart? Nope. It's or is it Fox? No, that that's Shopify. Yeah. Good job. Nope. Sorry. Hit a 404. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good job. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I like this question from Turnt Alien. Can we optimize our Webflow sites for Apple Watch? So I made a video on my own YouTube channel um, about that when Apple uh, had their last, what is it, uh, WWDC, and one of the presenters was like, yeah, we have Safari inside of the, the watches, and I'm like, what? So what I learned when um, I did some research is the the size of the phone screen is, is, is already big when it comes to the pixels and all that stuff. So if you do mobile portrait for this, uh, this already fits, uh, this breakpoint already fits Apple Watch. As long as you're making things with percentages, uh, making your widths and heights with percentage rather than fixed pixels. So it's fluid uh, no matter what screen size, okay? It may be they'll have a Apple Watch X, XL, large S. I don't know. And then it like takes up your whole hand or something. It's all huge. And so you, do you have to fix for that breakpoint? No, just make sure that everything's fluid. You're using VH, VW, or percentage, and you'll be fine. So can you optimize Webflow size for Apple Watch? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, but yeah, that, <laughs> that is, that's the sign of the times. All right, uh, it's, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to take the last question here if there's no last questions. Um, Noah, I already uh, showed a page. Let me see here. Is there any questions in the YouTube chat room that I'm missing? Uh, ooh, there's a lot of talk in the YouTube chat room. Meganav, uh, Meganav, please. Uh, yeah, so the Webflow M Meganav, I think Ryan, our lead brand designer, is working on a blog post for how he did this. All right, so stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see here, let's see the ask a question. Any other comments? Hey Nelson, first question was was missed. What first question? 
Okay. Uh, the chat function on the Webflow site, how do I build it? Good question. The chat function that you are talking about, let's see here. If it, is it on hosting or something? One of these pages, we have a thing that shows up right here on the bottom right. And what we use is intercom.io. So I and the rest of the support team are here on intercom answering your questions all live when it comes to domain name settings or sales questions we're able to help out with those uh, right away i think it's on the pricing page too hold on resources pricing i think it's here show up no i think we have it for a couple of seconds or something it, it should show up but yeah, so that's what we're using intercom.io. All you have to do is copy the code from their, uh, when you're going through the setup, you can copy the code and then place it inside of your uh, Webflow uh, custom code area, which is, let me just go to mine real quick. In the project settings, you can go to custom code and you can add it to the top or the bottom footer code, okay? I think you should put in the footer code because that's where all the JavaScript usually goes. So yeah uh hopefully this answers your question michael anything else anything else i think that's it yeah let's end this let's end this on a high note uh where is it right there no that's not it that's it okay <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who's in the live chat room on youtube and on crowdcast you guys have been fun I like doing these streams for you because I want you guys to be inspired. I want you guys to learn a thing or two. And hopefully with these basic fundamentals, you can build on top of them and do something awesome. Build something awesome for your clients, for your friends, for your local organizations. And make your sites just so much better so people enjoy it and still get information out of it as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's go through our outro. If you need any account billing or technical help, okay, uh, go to university.webflow.com slash contact. Fill out that form and I and the rest of the customer support customer success team will help you out as fast as we can. If you have any design or custom code questions, Throw those over to forum.webflow.com and join the uh, the rest of the community there of designers and developers because we all want to help. So if you get your question answered, please answer someone else's question so we can all grow together. This stream happens every other Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You can follow us on our social media, Twitter at Webflow app. You can follow me at the Pixel Geek. You can go on Instagram, follow us there. We're featuring a lot of your awesome sites. If you build something awesome, hit us up on Twitter and we can feature it on our social media channels. So Instagram.com slash Webflow app, Facebook.com slash Webflow. That's it. Again, my name is Nelson. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. And as always, make the web beautiful. See ya.